Hi there, I'm Claire Bestland, and I'm a guitar slinger, singer, songwriter, and composer who a few years ago ran to the hills of Wakefield, Quebec, and never left. And I'm really glad I stayed, because today I get to be your host of Oud Away Live, the weekly arts magazine series devoted to showcasing the unique arts and culture of the Oud Away region of West Quebec. Each episode, we showcase artists of all practices, as well as venues, galleries, and cultural performance spaces from all over the rural region of the Utaway. Now, ever since I came here, I've been wondering what it is about this area that attracts so many creative people of like mind. From artisans, to craftspeople, to musicians, visual artists, painters, writers, maybe there's something in the water. Now, if I keep talking like this, it might turn out you do have all day, but for now, why don't you kick back, relax, and come along for a ride with us to experience the artistic side of life right here on Udaway Live. So here we are already on our last episode of Udaway Live. And I just want to say what an honor it's been to have been tasked with being able to go and interview and get to know so many incredible artists and musicians. It's been a whirl, and I'm very thankful. Today, our musical performance is by Jacob River Milnes, and Jacob River Milnes is a singer-songwriter from val de mont Quebec. Jacob, who I've seen repeatedly play in many different bands as a really exquisite guitarist, is gonna tell us a little bit about how the period of COVID gave him the time to be able to write a whole new body of work as a songwriter. And we're really lucky to have him share it with us today. Jacob's gonna to be performing right here at Mill Road Community Space in Chelsea, Quebec. And we'll be speaking a little bit with Glenn Foster, who is a board member at LaFab, which is an artist co-op that has recently relocated to this space. Glenn's gonna tell us a little bit about some of their plans for the future in terms of using the space as artist studios and a performance venue. Then we'll be heading over to LaFab's former space in Chelsea, and we'll be speaking with Rosalie Gingras. Um, Rosalie is a ceramics artist who's gonna tell us a little bit about her craft and show us around some of LaFab's former home. I'm uh, Jacob River Milnes, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and uh, musician. Uh, of all sorts, from val de mont Quebec. Like I live in a pretty musical family, and I grew up in it. So music uh, was always totally around, um, like all kinds too, like classical, uh, jazz, blues, and pop. Yeah, well, I started writing songs when I was 12, and it w I don't really know, I have no idea why, really. It was just kind of... Uh, mystical um, kind of experience that I had one night. I uh, just wanted to write songs and it was like a super strong feeling. And um, yeah, now I'm 17, soon to be 18. And I don't really know how I got here. As I got into songwriting, um, Bob Dylan really blew me away. I mean, uh, Highway 61 in particular was an album I was listening to at that time and uh, yeah but it's really just like great songwriting that I love um, so the style is kind of secondary. I set myself up a home studio in my basement um, I've had it for many years and when the pandemic hit that was the only thing I had to do so I actually I, I wrote tons of stuff and recorded tons of stuff there during the pandemic, but I recently, in about April, I think, I put out um, an album of like 10 songs that are from that time uh, called, and it's called I'll Be Waiting Here. Um, and it's out on all streaming platforms now. <laughs> Something in the air that's a little off tonight. There's something in the room that just doesn't feel right. There's an ambulance round the bend that's just been told to leave. There's police on every corner 
waiting for a scene. There's a girl in the window looking out to the street who will soon fall victim to a fact of history. And up until someone can tell us what's going on, up until the last teardrop falls on the pages of a protest song, Say her name For the ones who came before Say her name For the fighter in the war Say her name For the broken and unjust Say her name Along with all of us Say her name, yes But don't ever forget The centuries of slavery And civil unrest That are so closely tied To our image of the dream that have been there all our lives but we have yet to see all the men who shot and murdered and criminally stole countless innocent lives and human stories told who deny and reject they could have made a mistake that would be too much for their fragile souls to face say her name for the ones who came before say her name for the fighter in the war say her name for the broken and unjust, say her name, along with all of us. There's a mother in the street tonight Weeping at the loss The thing that you receive Is never worth the cost And this thing that they call justice That they say will ease the hurt It's just another broken system That puts the privileged first Take this badge off of me well, I can't use it anymore It's getting dark, too dark to see And I feel like I'm knocking on heaven's door Knock, knocking on heaven's door Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door Knock, 
knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Just like so many times Mama put this gun on the ground I can't shoot it anymore There's a long black cloud and it's a coming down And I feel like I'm knocking on heaven's door My name's Glenn Foster, and um, I, uh, well, let's see now, three years ago, I uh, was asked to be on the board of the LaFab Arts Centre, uh, which has been housed in the rectory of the uh, Catholic Church, St. Stephen's in Old Chelsea. And uh, last year, we had to rene renegotiate uh, a lease. We had trouble doing that, didn't work out. Uh, so we were kind of homeless. This building was up for sale, so we decided to uh, we managed to uh, work out an arrangement to buy it. That's where we're at now. So I've been president of the, the, the organization for three years. Um, so I've seen this transformation happen. Sure. I wouldn't say I've guided it, but I've, I've motivated people to make it happen uh, because it's quite a project. The Fab has always been a visual arts organization with a gallery and a boutique um, and uh, nine studios that uh, artists rent. So it's both an incubator, creative space, as well as a, uh, a display space. And uh, uh, the mission and vision of the organization is to, is to promote the cultural economy of the region, involved viewed away, and help improve the livelihoods of artists, as well as provide products that the community will enjoy. Um, it's always been visual arts. Moving into this space with this performance space we have here, we can expand that into a performance as well. So uh, we're looking at music, and uh, in time, theater, dance, and drama, all sorts of uh, performance. Art de la scène uh, will happen. So it'll be, we'll have two parts now, visual arts and performance arts. It's about providing a conduit for the, these creative people to, to have an outlet. And you know, this is beautifully located. It's a rural area, but it abuts the urban area. So it's, it's no distance for people to come out to here to see performances, to, to view the art on the in the gallery walls. Um, so that's what sort of Le Fab's all about and what it's growing into. This is the 10 year anniversary of Le Fab. Um, so in the, the old location on Old Chelsea Road in Old Chelsea, there will be a 10 year celebration in August, August 28th, there's, a, there's events happening. And so it's kind of interesting that after 10 years, this, this new birth happens. So what are the next 10 years gonna be like? That's, that's it's exciting. Uh, we have to be out of the, the old place the end of October, maybe the end of the year. Uh, so we want to be in here functioning by fall. So we're thinking 
before Christmas, having a big grand opening, a big, big event, a big uh, presenting ourselves to the community. Uh, in November, end of November, you know, in time for Christmas, perhaps. Yeah. And, um, and at that point, you know, I see arts fair, I see performances, um, work, workshops for children in the classroom. Um, studios will be, you know, open house. The art gallery will be up and running. And uh, there will be many more renovations to occur after that, but, but we'll get to stage one quite quickly, and in the fall we'll have the big, the big grand opening. This space is going to stay much as it is. It'll be, it'll be prettied up, um, but the sound is so nice in here. The acoustics are so beautiful that uh, let's not mess with that. So uh, we, we probably will expand the stage somewhat, you know, change, change the, the front of it a bit. Um, so this is the performance space. It'll be used for other purposes as well. Uh, I'd love to see art fairs happening in here as well, uh, Christmas time, various times of the year. There's 3,000 square feet in the back on two floors. We will have the, the nine studios that we had in the other place. We'll, we'll uh, partition up the basement space into nine, essentially nine studios to simplify it. And uh, we will also have over here a gallery, an art gallery, visual art gallery, and a store of some sort. These things are yet to be defined. And um, we also will have a classroom downstairs and a workroom, which is, which is uh, a, we never had that in the old place. So we can have, uh, we, can, we can start developing much more programming, much more community outreach, community engagement, as well as professional development. We're really working towards that, both on the visual arts side and the performance side. Like we see musicians having an outlet for their work, um, getting a, a good audience in here and uh, getting exposure. Same thing with the visual arts. Um, personally, I really want to work on that side of it. Um, um, there's so much, yeah, is, this is a perfect spot for, uh, for promoting regional artists and artisans. So I'm Rosalie Gingra, I'm a ceramist, and uh, we're here in La Fab to talk about what I do and about the place here. As a child, I always knew that uh, I would do art when I would become an, art, uh, an adult. Uh, that's always something I wanted to do. Um, in high school, I was dreaming about becoming a makeup artist for cinema. Uh, so uh, when I get graduated in 2001, I, I took a program, a makeup program. But um, yeah, it was not exactly what I thought, but I finished it anyway. And I worked a little bit as a makeup artist. Uh, but uh, yeah, after a year or two, I decided to go back to school and uh, to study visual arts. And that's where I, I uh, worked with Clay for the first time, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, but then I became a mom when I was still in Sejap. And I quit school, and I became a full-time mom. And I had three more kids, and I stayed home with them. But uh, during all these years, I continued uh, creating. Um, but then I thought, oh, I should, I should go back to, to Clay. That, that's what I, I really liked in, in school. Uh, so when my youngest started preschool, um, I took a class and I, I fell in love with, with pottery. And I think a week after I bought a wheel and I was very uh, decided to, to go into pottery and do something like with, with that. After I think two years of practicing, I finally was able to produce things that I was proud of. So I put a few things for sale and it sold. So I continued. And um, I think a year after I started doing pottery, uh, we, we built our house uh, here in Chelsea. And uh, we built my, my studio in the basement. And so that, that's where I, I do my stuff. It's like kneading bread a little bit to prepare the clay, just to make sure that there's no hair bubbles or things like that. Not, not hair bubble, air bubble. <laughs> And then I throw it on the wheel. So I do bowls, cups, all kinds of things. And then I let it dry for a day and then I trim it. So it's all the, like if you see, like, like this bowl, for example, it's just when I finish it, it's not, it's not completely done at the bottom. So I have to, to trim it to finish the bottom to make it more beautiful and then I fire it and then I do I do my own glaze then I glaze them and I do a second firing and sometimes I, I really like doing scraffito 
So sgraffito is everything like this when there's uh, different lines, uh, designs like this. So what I do is I, I throw my pieces with white clay or sometimes with a mix of different clay, like gray, white, things like that. And then I put a layer of colored clay or under glaze and I let it dry and then I carve. I carve the design or the lines or anything. In school, uh, yeah, I had uh, two uh, classes of paintings. So I had to, to produce paintings and I, I really enjoyed it. So I thought, yeah, maybe I should do this also, not, not only pottery. So yeah, I did the, uh, I think my first painting was, uh, I, I had to, to, to create anything. So I just painted a fish and I really liked it. So. Next time I had to do a, a triptych, like a, um, yeah. So I took uh, drapes and pictures and I painted them. And yeah, so I did a few of these. And then someone asked me to do um, birds paintings for his new shop. So I did that and I said, wow, okay, I like birds. So I did more, <laughs> so yeah. So La Fab is a co-op for regional artists. Uh, we have, I think, so we have a boutique, we have a gallery, and we have studios that we rent. We have nine studios. Uh, so it, it's a place where any, any regional artist can come, sell their stuff, uh, exhibit, um, rent studio. Uh, we have 40 artists selling the boutique, and every month there's a new exhibition. And it's also a place where we have gatherings when there's vernissage. But we, we knew that the United Church was uh, open to maybe selling their, their place. So we approached them and they were very receptive and we started the negotiation. So we took possession end of June and uh, we already started doing uh, renovations. Um, and uh, we will continue to have show there and we will have studios, we will have the gallery, boutique and also a classroom. So we will be able to start uh, giving class. All right, so this is a new song. Uh, you won't be able to find it anywhere um, that I just wrote. It's called You Better Run. I don't think you know how much it caused her pain. I don't think you know how much trouble you've made. You got a lot of nerve showing your face around here, and you're taking a chance. I just want to make that clear.
Yo.